So next part is conformations of cyclohexane. So it's not conformation, this is conformations, okay? So we'll see what kind of different shapes and different uh, structures we can have for cyclohexane, okay? But before we start talking about cyclohexane, let's compare, okay? So these are the different shapes we have, right? So we have <clears throat> cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane, right? And if you look at all these carbons, right? So if you pick any single carbon here, okay? It's a single bond carbon. That means that is sp3 carbon, right? So the sp3 carbon is this, right? So you have, right? So all the different bonds on them, okay? sp3, that's what you have. You have two hydrogens here. And the bond angle should be 109.5 because that is tetrahedral. Right. So if you have sp3 carbon, okay, which is same here, then the bond angle should be 109.5 between any two bonds. You can choose any two bonds. The angle is still 109.55. Okay. Now if you take a look at the triangle here, okay, that's a triangle. So the bond angle is actually not 109.5. Even though this carbon is sp3 carbon, but the bond angle here is 60 degree. Okay, so the bond angle is 60 degree right here. Okay. If we take a look at the cyclobutane, it's still sp3 carbon, but the bond angle is 90 degree because that is a square. Right. Here the bond angle is 107 degrees. Right. And here the bond angle is 120 degrees. All right, so sp3 carbons ideally should have this bond angle, 109.5, okay? But none of them match to 109.5. This is close, but still not the perfect, all right? So what I'm trying to tell you here that what we are doing here is to form the ring, okay? We're squeezing those bonds so we can form a ring, okay? In this case, same thing. We're squeezing the one, the bond 109 to 90 degree. We're squeezing it to form the ring. Okay. Now, when you're trying to squeeze the bonds, those two bonds means there are electrons, and electrons they have the same charge, so they want to stay as apart as possible. Instead, they don't want to stay close. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to bring them close, so the molecule not will, will not like it. So that is, the molecule not happy. When it's not happy, we say this. There's a lot of strain in the molecule. Okay, we strain the molecule to put the ring together. Okay, same thing is here. Now in this case, we are actually stretching the bonds, okay, to form the ring. Okay, so what do you expect? That there should be strain in this as well. But cyclohexane actually is very, very stable molecule. Okay, so I can understand these, these three molecules have strain. Okay but cyclohexane actually does not have any strain and it is a very, very stable structure, okay? The reason behind that, the cyclohexane actually is what we see here is like a hexagon, right? But in reality, cyclohexane is not a hexagon. Instead, it is in the shape of, let's say we call it as, it looks like this, so, that is called as a chair conformation. Okay, so cyclohexane is actually not a hexagon. Instead, it is in this shape like this, which is called as a chair. So it looks like a chair. So this is your headrest and this is your leg rest. So you're looking at more like a beach chair, not the office chair. Okay, so headrest and leg rest. So that is called as a chair conformation. All right, <clears throat> so cyclohexane, we write it for convenience because it's easier to write like this, but in reality, it's a chair conformation, okay? So you can write chair like this, or you can write down chair like this. Either way is fine, okay? So you can have, okay, so you can have a chair this side, or you can have a chair this side, all right? So chair conformation, either this way or this way. All right, so how can we transform your cyclohexane from your normal hexagon to the chair conformation with all these bonds on the on the chair, right? So each corner here is your carbon, right? So those are the carbons you're looking at, your six carbons. That's your carbon frame, right? So these are six carbons here, 
those are the six carbons, right? And then what you have, what else you have? Those each carbon also has two hydrogens, right? So what are the different positions you have on these? Then you have these positions like this. A hydrogen can go like this, right? So then each carbon actually has two different positions with two hydrogens, right? So there's a hydrogen right here, and there's a hydrogen right there. Right, so these are the different positions. Okay, so if you draw a model for this, then you actually can see all these different positions of the hydrogens. Right. <clears throat> so all these carbons has two hydrogens oriented in different different positions. Now, how do you read it? How do I know the position of this hydrogen? Right. So basically, what you have is you have two different positions right here. Okay. So whichever is vertical. Okay. So all the vertical bonds. Okay. So vertical, vertical, verticals. So all the vertical bonds are called as axial. Okay, or we can just write down A for that. Okay, so all the vertical bonds are axial. So this hydrogen is axial. Okay, this is axial, 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 and axial. Okay, so we have six axial. Okay, this is your axial as well. All right. And all the other ones which do not align vertically, then they're all equatorial. Okay, so those are equatorial. So let's say this carbon right here, hydrogen right here is equatorial. So equatorial with E. So this is equatorial right here, equatorial right here. This is equatorial, 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 and equatorial. Okay, so we have six axial and six equatorial positions on each carbon, okay? <clears throat> so each carbon has one axial, one equatorial, and there are total six axial and six equatorial, all right? So this is our reference. So anytime we have to write a structure, we have to refer to this, okay? So we know which is axial and equatorial, all right? <clears throat> so another way to look at it is, so let's say if I write down all the hydrogens on those carbons right here, So there's one way to look at it is axial and equatorial. And other way to look at it is, okay, are we going up or are we going down? Okay, so when you draw a bond, right, so if I start from a carbon, if I draw a bond like this, then I'm going up. So that will be position up. And when I draw a carbon to harden this bond right here, I'm going as, I'm going down. So that will be your down position. So we have up and down, okay. So this position right here will be here. I'm going up, so that will be up, and this will be down. So this is down, this is up, down, up, up, down, up, down. Okay, so how do I figure it out again? Starting from the carbon, when I draw a bond, I'm going up or down, I'm going up, so this is up. When I draw this bond, I'm going down. So when I draw this bond right here, I'm going up, and I'm going down here, okay? So two different ways to look at axial and equatorial and up and down, okay? So up and down or above or below, either way is fine, okay? So up, down, or you can call this as above or below. So either way is fine, all right? So make sure you understand these two things properly because we're gonna be making use of this now onwards, all right? So let's see how can we apply these models in solving the problems. So let's say the question is, draw the most stable chair conformation for methyl cyclohexane, okay? So in this case, you have a position of your methyl. So you have a solid wedge line, that means this is above the plane, right? So what I can do is I can transform that into a chair conformation first, right? So I can write down the chair conformation for this, right? <clears throat> and I can choose this as a carbon one, right? Because we only have one branch so I can choose as carbon one all right so I can start okay I can make that carbon one like this all right so carbon one okay should have a methyl okay so methyl on carbon one and that should be up because I have already given to you that's up so what is the up position on carbon one I guess this is your carbon one right here 
which is the up position on carbon one, that's your up position on carbon one. So your metal should be right here. So that's the metal. Okay. Now in this case, we don't write hydrogens because we also have all these hydrogens all over the place, but we don't write them because we're only looking at the CH3 as a substituent okay, or as a branch. Your hydrogen is not your branch. All right. So if I make this as carbon one, then I have a metal which is up right here. Okay. What I can do now in the second step, I can make this carbon as carbon one. Okay. I can potentially I can make any carbon as carbon one because all the carbons are the same here, right? So if I make this as carbon one, then I should have your metal, which is the up position on this carbon. That's your up position right here because I want that to be up. So your metal should be up right here. Okay. Now if I change to this carbon right here, if I move further. And if I make this as carbon one, right, then my CH3 will be up right here. Right, so this is your carbon one now. All right. Now what I'm trying to say here is if you keep going on, if you change one carbon at a time, right? So if I make this as one, then second time I make the other carbon as one, third time I make this as one, then you will start to see a repetition. Okay. So what kind of repetition we have? We have a CH3 as axial here, right? So the, the position is axial because we want up so we kept it like this but that position is axial okay then this position is equatorial right so that bond here is equatorial okay and this is vertical so this is again axial All right now the question is let's go back to the question here is which is the most stable Okay, chair conformation. So when it comes to stability, then we are talking about equatorial. So more equatorial you have, more stable it is. Okay, so in this case we have axial, axial, axial cannot be stable. That's all what we have here is equatorial. So this is the more stable chair conformation for metal cyclohexane. So this is more stable. Why is more stable? Because that has most number of equatorials. So more equatorial is more stable. So next example, we're trying to find out the most stable chair conformation for you have one, two dimethyl cyclohexane. Okay, so in this case, I can make any carbon as one and two. I'll make this as one and this as two. So let's transform that into a chair. Okay, so this is my carbon one, let's say. So I made this as one, and the next one will be two. So you have adjacent one and two. Okay, so one and two. Okay, so one has a metal up. So metal up here is this, right? And two also has, two has a metal down. So this is your carbon one and carbon two, right? So what's the down position on? <clears throat> Carbon two right here is this. So that is your metal right here. That's your carbon two position, right? Then the next thing we'll do is we'll switch. So instead of making this as a carbon one, I'll make this as carbon one and make this as carbon two, all right? So carbon one has a metal up and up position on this is right here. So that is your CH3. So you just have to keep going in the loop, one carbon at one time, right? So if I make this as one, second time I make this as one, and that will become two then, so that's your one and two. So carbon two has a metal down, so metal down is this position right here. Okay, so that's your metal down position right there. <clears throat> right. In third structure, what I will do is I will make this as carbon one and make this as carbon two. All right. So if I make this as carbon one, then carbon one has metal up, so that will be your metal up right here. Right. And carbon two has metal down, so metal down right here. So that's your one and two. Okay. So now this is an indication that I have to stop. Why I have to stop? Because I start to see the repetitive pattern. Right. So when it starts to see the repetition, then you stop. And why is the repetition? Because we have two axial. Okay. And then again, you got two axials here. Okay. So we will start to repeat, and that's why you stop. So you don't have to go anymore. Okay. And then you start comparing them. 
So how many axial and how many equatorials we have? So we have two axial here. So this is your axial, your axial. Okay, this is also axial and axial. Okay, and in this case, this is equatorial and equatorial. Okay, so according to rule, more equatorial, less axial. Okay, and that makes it more stable. So more equatorial, more stable. So that should be a more stable structure. Okay, so we can make this as carbon one. Second time, you just keep going around. Okay, make carbon, this as carbon one. Third time, make this as carbon one. And try to find out what kind of different patterns you can get. And the moment you start to repeat, then you stop. Okay, then you don't have to go anymore because you can expect if I go one more structure, then I will get this. Okay, because if you started with two axial, then you got two equatorial, then you'll have two axial and two equatorial. Okay, that means you stop and then you compare, and whichever has more equatorial is the most stable. So, next example, we are looking at three groups on the cyclohexane. So, we have three branches, right? So, again, it doesn't matter how you go with it, this is not nomenclature, so you can number the way you want. I can make this as one, that'll be two, and then three. So that will be three, four, and that will be a five. So we have branches on carbon one, three, and five. Okay. So then I can start making this as carbon one. Okay. So I want carbon one, then three and five. Okay. So your one, that'll be your three, and that'll be the five. All right, because we are look, only looking at these three carbons, right? So carbon one has a metal up, so that would be your metal up, right? Carbon three has metal down, so that would be your metal down right here. And five has metal up, so five metal up is right here. <clears throat> All right. The next structure I will switch, okay? I'll make this as carbon one. So if this is your carbon one, then that will be number three, and that will be number five. So that's your one. Three and five. All right. <clears throat> so carbon one is up, so that's methyl is up. Three is down, so three is down. And five is up, so five is up right here. All right. And in the so let's draw one more structure and let's see if we can get the repetition. So when you get start to repeat, then you stop. Right. So. If I make this as carbon one now, so that's your one, that will be three, and that will be five. So one is up, so that's metal is up. Three is down, so that's three is down, so that's your one, three and five, and five is up. All right, so let's try to compare now. Or sometimes you might have to go to the fourth structure, but let's see if we can find the answer here, <clears throat> right? So what we have, we have two axial, one equatorial, right? So we have axial, axial, equatorial, right? We have equatorial, equatorial, axial. So two equatorial, one axial, two axial, one equatorial, right? So in this case, what we have, we have axial, axial, equatorial. So we got two axial here and we got two axial here. So we start to repeat now. So that means you stop, okay? And we stop and then we compare. So if I compare, which structure has the most number of equatorial? This structure right here. So that should be a more stable structure. Okay, because we have more equatorial. So two equatorial, two axial, two axial. All right, so let's try something else. Okay, so in this case, we have three groups, but they're not the metals. We have tertiary brittle group. <clears throat> we have isopropyl and a metal, All right? So the first thing you wanna do is try to identify on what carbon they, they are, right? So we have one, two, three, and four. So we are, th these are on one, two, and four carbons, right? <clears throat> so when we start, we can start with, usually I start on this carbon, so it's easier for me to keep track, right? So I have carbon one, two, so that is your one, two, and then that will become your four. So carbon one, two, and four, right? So carbon one has methyl up, so methyl up is right here. Then we have carbon two has tertiary butyl group, which is down. So tertiary butyl group down is right here. Okay. Now make sure that when you have the wedge lines, okay, you don't write the wedge lines on the chair conformation because that position itself tells you that that position is below the plane. So you, when you write it, we write it here, but not here. Okay. That means it's below the plane already. Right? And then position four on. 
sorry, on carbon four, up position is is this, right? So we have one, two, and four in this structure. Okay, let's start putting other structure with starting as one here. So if I make this as one, this as two, and this will be four then. Right? So one, two, and four. So one has methyl up, right? <clears throat> So two has tertiary butyl down, so that your down position right here, and four has isopropyl group up right here. Okay, so that's your four up. Right. <clears throat> Let's draw one more structure just to make sure that we get the repetition, right? So then I can make this as one, two, and four. So one is methyl up, right? Two is tertiary butyl group down. And four is up, which will be this. So you want to and four. <clears throat> All right. So let's see if you have a repetition. So how many axial, how many equatorial we have, right? So we have two axial. So this is your axial, axial, and equatorial. Right? Here we have equatorial, equatorial, axial. Alright. Here we have axial, axial, and equatorial. So we have two axial. And we have two axial. So we start to repeat now. Okay, so we started from here, we went here, and we went here. Now we, we don't have to go any further because we, we saw a repetition. And when you see a repetition, you stop and then you compare. So this structure has two equatorial, one axial. That means this should be your more stable structure. Okay, that's your answer. So we saw when you have one branch on the cyclohexane, then how do you handle it? We have two branches, we have, we have three branches, okay? The last one is what is gonna happen when you have four branches now, okay? <clears throat> so when you have four branches, again, we do the exact same thing what you've been doing so far, okay? Try to number the carbon atoms, right? Now, it doesn't really matter which way you go, okay? So this is your one, two, three, so that will become four and five, right? So we want one, two, four, and five. Okay? So I can start from here, okay? So that'll be your one, two, four, and five. So I can number those carbons, right? So one has metal up, right? So metal up, two is metal down. So two is metal down. Four is metal up, and five is metal down. So that's your final right? Now what I'll do is I will rotate. So I can make this as carbon one, and this is carbon two. That will become four and five, right? So one. <clears throat> Two, four, and five. So one is metal up right here. Two is metal down. So two metal down right here. Right. Four metal up. Right. And five metal down. So five metal down right here. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go for the next one. So in this case, we can make this as carbon one right here. So that will be your one, two, then you have four and five. So four and five. So one is metal up, right? Two is metal down, right? <clears throat> four is metal up, so four metal up will be right here. And five is metal down, so five metal down right here. <clears throat> All right. Now, in this case, if you compare, then we have two equatorial, two axial, right? Two axial, two equatorial, two axial, two equatorial. So no matter how far I go, I have the same pattern. So in this case, you can choose any one because they're all the same, right? So you have two axial, two equatorial, two axial, two equatorial, two axial, equatorial. So you can choose any structure; they're all the same. All right. <clears throat> So it's just a coincidence, it can happen too, okay? But again, what you're looking at is how many axial, how many equatorial you have. More equatorial, more stable it is.